Welcome into ESPN's Ball and the Real World podcast. I'm your host, Kane Pittman, joined today by a special guest, fresh off an appearance on ESPN's The Jump, Dyson Daniels. How you doing, man? I'm great. You know, glad to be here. Uh, so we were talking just before we started recording. Turned 19 just last week, got home just in time for your birthday, but the NBA draft is June 23. What does the next couple of months look like for you? Yeah, so, um, you know, for me, it's just, you know, preparing, working on things that I need to work on, you know, for the draft. And, you know, I've got feedback, you know, from coaches, you know, agents, stuff like that um, on what I need to work on. So for me, it's, you know, living in the weight room, you know, putting on some size and then, you know, just getting heaps of reps up, you know, on my shot. You know, I um, think, you know, that's, what, that's my swing skill that I need to have is, um, you know, my, my shot. So making sure that, you know, I got my mechanics right and then, you know, just getting reps up um, on that. And then, of course, you know, I'm going to be putting in, you know, the work, you know, conditioning, ball handling and stuff like that. So... It's, you know, a bit of everything, but, you know, I have two main skills that I'm focusing on, you know, leading up to the draft. What are you weighing in at now? Uh, right now, I'm 200 pounds, so, like, I think just above 90 kilos. And do you, uh, do you have a, a goal that you want? I mean, obviously, it takes time, but do you yeah. have a goal you want to get to? I mean, 210 pounds, you know, by the draft, you know, I want to get to, but, you know, in the end run, you know, 220 would be good, 225 around that, around that mark. We're going to get to a bunch of the stuff that you went through with the G League team, but while we're on that, so when you talk about putting on weight and talking to a lot of draft prospects that come through, it's the same situation for them. How do you go about it? Obviously, it's weight room, but what have you learned? Dietary, eating, all those types of things. Exactly. You know, it's not just about living in the weight room. It's about what you eat. Um, and for me, you know, it's about mum. You know, I, I'm communicating with mum all the time, you know, when I'm coming home to, you know, have meals ready for me, and you know, she's been good with that, so... Um, you know, just making sure she got meals, you know, pastas, you know, protein, all that sort of stuff, you know, after gym sessions and, you know, playing basketball, you know, I sweat a lot, so I'm losing a lot of weight as well. So I've got to make sure I'm getting my fluids in. And yeah, I think, you know, the main part of it is eating as, um, as well as living in the weight room. So, so you come home and now your mum's picked up a, a, a job as, as a yeah. full-time chef, basically. I've told her she has to be onto this. You know, <laughs> but I want to get to my, my goal of the NBA, you know, she got to be onto this. So. Um, no, she's been, she been good and she's been cooking meals for me, so you know, she's been really helpful. So you, you are going to be spending time back home in Bendigo, but the, obviously the NBL season is still rolling here. I'm sure you'll be catching some of that, but is there any plans to try and link up with one of the teams there and get some scrimmages in or practices or those types of things? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I'm home for about a month, so you know, I'll be doing a lot of individual training, but you know, I think you know, I'm going to try maybe Melbourne United, um, you know, get some work in with them you know, mm -hmm. towards the end. Um, just, you know, stay in, stay in shape, you know, um, keep, you know, the physicality and, you know, keep the mind on the five and five game because, you know, it's a long time between now and the draft of not playing a game. So, you know, being able to join in a training session or two, you know, be good for me just to, um, you know, just stay in shape. And, but for me, it's, you know, working on things that I need to work on leading up to the draft. Going back to the decision to go to the G League and you spoke about this with Gazy and Copes on the jump and you described it as a risk, which feels right. And this G League Ignite setup is only in its second season. It's brand new. We've seen the success guys have had with the next stars. And then obviously right now, the tournament's going on. Yeah. So as you're trying to work through that decision, why ultimately did you trust that the G League was the right path? Yeah, so for me growing up, I think, you know, college was the main option. I think, you know, that was the main option for most people growing up. They want to go to college, they want to play D1 school. And, and that was probably the main option up, up until like, maybe seven, 17 years old and once the NBL and uh, G League came into play, you know, I thought to myself, like, this is what I want to do if I want to get to the NBA, you know, this is um, going to be the best path for me and, you know, leaving my home country, you know, I, I didn't really want to do that, but you know, I think during the G League Ignite, you know, playing with the NBA rules, the 48 minutes, you know, the NBA length court, NBA length three-point line, NBA ball, everything about it's the NBA and, um, you know, being in America, there's obviously, you know, that's where the NBA is, there's a lot more scouts, um, you know, teams there and, I think, you know, there's a lot of eyes on the, the G League Ignite. Um, and for me, you know, the risk was, you know, taking it because, you know, there's going to be players brought in as well that, try, that have the same goals as you. Um, you know, we had, we had six, you know, young guys that, you know, all trying to achieve their NBA dreams. So, you know, mixing that together can be hard. But I think, you know, us as a group, we did that really well. Um, you know, everyone wanted each other to succeed and that's why it worked so well. And, you know, towards the end, you know, we started playing as a team and everyone knew their role and, you know, it worked out really well. You mentioned some of the young guys, and in some respects, I think it's overblown a little bit because it is similar to some of the top colleges where you've got a bunch of guys that are battling for yeah. those spots in the drafts as well. But with Jaden Hardy, Marjon Bochamp, you guys are really at the top of the top of the list when it comes to mock drafts. Did you guys, obviously you, you work together, but did you talk about it and, and perhaps some of the challenges you were going through or some of the pressures you were feeling? We did. You know, um, you know at the start of the season, yeah, we sat down, you know, we had a talk with each other, like, you know, we're going to have to sacrifice something for each other to succeed. And, 
you know, for me, I think it was my scoring that I sacrificed. Um, you know, I was the point guard. You know, I was able to, you know, get more assists and more rebounds and push in transition and, you know, get looks for my teammate. And I think, you know, one of my strengths is being a facilitator. And you know, I think, you know, playing with guys that, you can, that can score the ball, you know, being able to get them the ball in the right positions was, was something that, um, you know, really helped me out um, and, you know, really projected me high in these mock drafts. And um, I think, you know, for, like just sitting down and talking to each other really helped us because, you know, we knew what we had to do to win. We knew what we had to do to succeed as an individual as well as teams. So, um, you know, it's very important to communicate with your teammates and be on the same page. So your dad, Ricky, went to NC State. So you understand or certainly the family understands what the college system can do and what you can benefit from that. And education is a part of that. How did you guys together discuss through what was going to happen and was there any part of him that said maybe you should go play yeah, for NC State? It definitely was you know mum and dad um you know obviously I had an offer from NC State so yeah. dad, dad you know was always looking at that as an option but you know they wanted the best for me and obviously you know it's hard to, for a parent to you know take the son out of school and get that <laughs> education and stuff like that so there's a lot of talking you know saying mum I want to go I want to go pro I want to go pro um and you know it took, took her a while to get um you know overcome that and you know let me go pro and you know looking back on it now you know it was the right decision, it's worked out. So, you know, she's grateful. And um, I mean, there's always education that I can go back and get. And um, this opportunity at G League Night only comes once. So I think, you know, taking this was the right decision. So one thing that was interesting to me, and I, I, I don't know a lot about it, but the professional pathway program. So the G League understands that there is going to be young players coming in that aren't getting that college education. So what did they put in place for you guys to be able to have some sort of education about really life skills and what's to come for you guys? Yeah, so we actually had, uh, we were enrolled in Arizona State University. So we um, took two Zoom classes a week. Um, they were mainly on like real estate, nutrition, um, and basically the money, like, you know, how to deal with our money and stuff like that. So, you know, we still learned, you know, we, um, we the last the last week with Ignite, we had a class every day, you know, they came into in person with us and we sat down, did some activities on, you know, just life skills and um, just stuff that we'd learn, you know, in college. So I think, you know, having that, you know, next to us and able to learn off that was really good. And um, yeah, like I said, you know, it was just great being able to, you know, be a part of en enrolled in Arizona State University and, and have the basketball side of it, but then also the, a little bit of the college side, you know, not as much as you would have in right. college, but, you know, there's, it was still there for us to, you know, learn. So what did you, like, what is the takeaway that you took from being able to go to that? Yeah, so for me, I, I really invested in real estate. Um, so I think, you know, I, I sat down with, um, you know, a few of the Arizona State teachers and, you know, we just talked about real estate, you know, options um, and then, you know, how to save money, you know, like the portions you want to save, you know, spend, you know, um, invest, you know, um, just all that sort of stuff. And for me, it was really beneficial because, you know, um, you know I want to be smart with my money and I also, you know, want to, you know, invest and make more money. So. Um, just being able to sit down with them and, you know, talk through some strategies and stuff like that was helpful. So in terms of the on-court stuff with the G League, I guess the other benefit of this, you spoke about some of the rules and the 48-minute game and all those types of things, but you're also playing against pros exactly. and a bunch of guys that have played in the NBA before. So perhaps from the start of the season to how you felt and, and watching you, it certainly, I mean, you always look pretty comfortable, but towards the back end of the season, you look like you were totally fine with the level. Uh, what benefit did you get from that? And how did you find the process? It was, it was great. You know, you're playing against players who are on two-way contracts. So, you know, they're trying to play yeah. well to, you know, get into their team. And, um, you know, for me, you know, the, the competition at the start was like, I, I, I was really shocked by, mm -hmm. you know, the first three games. I, I think my first four games, you know, I was really poor, turning the ball over, stuff like that. And I knew... From that, I had to. There were certain things I had to work on to be able to play at this level. And you know, the, thankfully for me, the coach trusted me. He put the ball in my hands. And um, you know, from probably the the tenth game of the season, you know, the last twenty, I just felt really comfortable in my role, and I knew what I had to do to have the team succeed. But you know, going up against pros, you know, people who played in the NBA, you know, it was huge for me, and it was a great learning experience. And as well as you know, the pros on my team, you know, um, I had Poo Jetta, who's uh, you know, who has spent a little bit of time in the NBA, as well as Kevin Murphy um, and Amir Johnson. You know. They were very helpful, you know, communicated with us, taught us, you know, they pushed us in practice and, you know, they ran drills, um, you know, that, like for us to, you know, be individually um, better. So, you know, they were really helpful. And, um, yeah, like I said, just going up against pros every day is you're going to get better.